Welcome to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. I am your writer-in-chief, Rosalind Jackson. I am a lover of words, and that love led me to a passion for writing. And what's the next best thing to writing? Talking about writing. So kick back and join me for mind-blowing chats about writing, covering everything from screenplays to novels to poetry, from nonfiction books to songwriting, and much more. Thank you for tuning in to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. Today we are talking with Vanessa Middleton. Vanessa Middleton is a successful screenwriter. She majored in film studies at Yale University with the intent of becoming a feature film director. But a writing assistant position on The Cosby Show jump-started her career in the direction of writing for television. She continued her writing career on shows such as Saturday Night Live, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Girlfriends, and Cosby, going from staff writer to executive producer in the process. Vanessa wrote and directed the Sundance film 30 Years to Life, a romantic comedy starring Tracy Morgan, which won Best Film and Best Director at the Pan-African Film Festival, and the Gordon Parks Award for Best Director by the Independent Feature Project. She also created the web series Walk This Way, starring Michael K. Williams. Vanessa is currently executive producer and showrunner of BET's one-hour drama series, Games People Play, executive produced by Tracy Edmonds for Edmonds Entertainment, starring Lauren London. And as a disclaimer, this interview was originally recorded during season one of Games People Play. Games People Play is now currently in pre-production for season two. Now, let's get into the interview. Welcome to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. Uh, Miss Vanessa Middleton. Hey, Ross. <laughs> I'm so glad we finally got to do this. It only took me, what, six, seven months? That's not bad. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> but we're here now, and the show is up and running, so we'll get into all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but first, we're going to talk about um, your beginnings mm-hmm. and your career. So tell me how you got your start TV writing. Uh, I got my start um, as a writing assistant for The Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I think I thought I'd be headed more in like the feature film uh, direction or mm-hmm. directing or being a producer or you know executive or something like that. Uh, I did always love television, and I grew up watching a lot of television. Um, If I did television, I thought I'd be on the executive side. But being a writing assistant on The Cosby Show and being in the writer's room Mm kind of turned me on to writing. And um, I also noticed there wasn't as much diversity on the staff as I thought there would be. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bad. But it wasn't, you know, as many people as I thought. And they were very nice and welcoming. And, you know, when I got in long enough to ask, you know, how come there's no more black people? And I was like, well, because <laughs> there's just not as many black writers. Oh, and wow. I was like, well, I'll be one. And they offered to help train me and help me pursue that. So that's oh, wow. what kind of got me going in that direction. And that's perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> you made a way for yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's... Um, it's such an iconic show and you know despite of the whole controversy and stuff that is it still stands in history you can't take that away so what was it looking back on it now how do you feel about being a part of such an iconic show uh, it was one still one of the best jobs of my life mm-hmm. um and one of the best creative experiences of my life and honestly you look back with a little bit of a melancholy because it was mm-hmm. just such a positive thing for you know, myself and everyone involved that, you know, it's unfortunate that um, things turned out the way they did and the legacy of the show is not what we thought it would turn out to be because mm-hmm. I wish it could be on a creative standpoint because it's very important. Right. But um, but my experience there and with everyone was very positive and I'm still in touch with like, of all the jobs I've ever had, I'm more in touch with the people I worked with then in my first job 20 years ago than any oh, other wow. job. So it was it was a good experience. Oh, wow. Great experience. Oh, wow. Now, what was the writer's room like in there? Um... It, it was it was the same as, as most rooms. It's just as a writing assistant, what would happen is things would move very fast. Mm-hmm. 
And then, um, you know, Bill would come in the room and pitch a lot of stuff. And it was almost like him doing like a piece of his stand up. He would pitch, you know, in character, in voice. And so it was different as a writing assistant in the sense that we would record like every time Bill came in the room, we have we had five writing assistants Mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. Um, And everything had to be transcribed. So everything that happened. So that's why, you know, you would record Mm -hmm. and then you type and then you leave and you'd have to type and the next person would come in, especially when, you know, Bill was talking. So it was intense. It was almost like being a court stenographer. It was just like, <laughs> you know, we're in the game. Everything must be captured oh, wow. and, and referenced and stuff. But mm. um, again, I learned a lot. It was intense. Probably the, it was the most intense room I've ever seen from a writing assistant standpoint, mm. but from a creative standpoint, it was like most other comedy rooms. Not a big room though. It was only like six writers. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, not this small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. What other shows um, have you written on? Um, I, I've done sketch. I wrote for the Apollo Comedy Hour. Mm-hmm. I wrote for Saturday Night Live. And those were earlier in my career. And then I did, you know, a lot of other sitcoms. I did uh, Hang Up Mr. Cooper and mm-hmm. Sister Sister and Girlfriends. And so that's kind of most of my television background has been mostly comedy, mm-hmm. um, sketch comedy and situation comedy. Okay. Now, how do you feel writing comedy versus drama like do you prefer one over the other or is one more you would think comedy would be more fun but is one more fun than I the mean other? to be honest with you comedy is t- to me a little harder because okay. it is the pressure to be funny oh, okay and doing a drama um you you just need to stay true to the characters and the story um and then I kind of infuse a little bit of humor into the drama I'm doing now just because that's the background that I come from mm-hmm. but I actually feel a little less pressure mm-hmm. when you don't have to be funny oh, okay <laughs> mm-hmm. all right just be authentic <laughs> so now let's get into games people play mm-hmm. which is the new hit show on BET and uh people are loving it it's uh, going crazy on Twitter, trending on Twitter and everything. Mm-hmm. So how did you become involved with the project? Um, Tracy Edmonds uh, approached me with the book um, that Angela Burt Murray had written. Mm-hmm. And they were looking for somebody to um, adapt it for television. So I came up with a way of... It was a really exciting book. It's like the best beach read ever. But Mm -hmm. then you got to think, okay, the characters were running so hot because you want them to just be really, you know, amazing for the length of the read. Mm -hmm. Now I kind of got to find a way to keep it as interesting, but then kind of dial them back a little bit for TV Mm -hmm. so they have some place to go so you can watch them for a long period of time. So, you know, it was just kind of a process where I pitched my take on it to Tracy Mm -hmm. and then she took me to Angela and Angela you know, graciously, you know, responded to me and signed off on me being able to, you know, adapt her work. Mm -hmm. And then we went in and Tracy brought me into the network and then Mm -hmm. we pitched again. And, you know, then we sold it, got the pilot script opportunity. And then it was kind of from there, pretty much a traditional, you know, TV development process. Oh, wow. wow! So it sounds like it was a, 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 like a fast thing that happened really fast, which I know because I it, it didn't inside. happen fast. <laughs> I mean, it, it took a year, so mm-hmm. that's kind of how long stuff should take. Oh, okay. it wasn't fast, mm-hmm. but it, it it wasn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, <laughs> a year isn't bad if you get on the air, so it's mm-hmm. not like you you know it right was time well spent. Okay, you know. So, what was it like being um, the showrunner or head writer on on the project? Um, for this one, and we were just talking about this a little bit um, earlier, you know, as we look toward the potential of a second season, I, I, it's a little more nerve wracking when you're starting a show mm-hmm. because, you know, we didn't know how everything was going to play out. We didn't have a cast yet. And I've always done network shows where um, you're in production some while you're still writing so you can make some adjustments. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it, it was good. It was a very positive experience. The only thing that was nerve wracking about it for me was it's always hard when you do a new show. So mm-hmm. you're developing the characters and storylines. Mm-hmm. And then for this, you're really walking that tightrope because we wrote and shot everything before it aired. 
So it's like, I hope they like it because I can't <laughs> fix it. So that was, but right now we're, um, episode six has just aired and mm-hmm. everybody's, you know, riding with us and enjoying it. So it's, it's, a, it's a relief and I, you know, but it was, it was good. It's mm-hmm. just always hard when it's new. Okay. Yeah. So what were your day to day, uh, duties in, in the writer's room as the showrunner head writer? Um, basically the way I like to, to work is we all are kind of in the same gang, Mm -hmm. you know, we all do the same thing. I think the, the, the biggest thing is you're kind of calling balls and strikes, so to speak. Everybody is coming up with ideas for the characters Mm -hmm. and the direction of the story. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is as showrunner, you have to have that overarching view of where you want things to go. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of pick and choose from the ideas, but I love working. It's one of the things I love about television over movies Mm -hmm. is you get to write with other people and you get Mm -hmm. the benefit of different people's ideas. And I guess the responsibility is to, you know, pick and choose the, the, the best ones. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes there's so many times I, and I have a good memory. There's so many times I come back in the room a week later, a month later, and I say, writer, you know, this thing you had, I didn't think it was good. I think it's great. Now let's do it. They wouldn't even remember their pitch. Oh, but I, I would remember pitches they didn't because you just you feel this responsibility to, to mm-hmm. absorb everything and then mm-hmm. make the right move. Oh, OK, <laughs> so what was a typical day in the room like? Pretty much that, you know, mm-hmm. we, we work from 10 to 6. We kind of tried to keep it close to nine to five and, mm-hmm. and, you know, not work. We didn't work late until we got into production. Mm-hmm. And um, that was it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we get together and we sit and we just start you know, breaking story and arguing. We got assistant in there, you know, writing notes and, and mm-hmm. um, you know, chipping away at everything and arcing out our season, whether you're doing the characters or a specific episode mm-hmm. or arcing out the story season. But mm-hmm. um, that's it. I mean, it really is a, a job. It's a little more casual, a little more fun, but mm-hmm. it's work, you know. <laughs> now, I used to remember listening to you guys. I could hear you guys in the room and mm-hmm. you guys would be laughing and cracking up. And I was mm-hmm. like, they are having fun in mm-hmm. there. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's hard work, but I was like, yeah. they are having fun. <laughs> so um, let's get into the show a little more. Um, who would you say is your favorite character on the show? I, my favorite thing about the show mm-hmm. is I do not have a favorite character. Uh, and the act, the casting, we were just so lucky and so blessed with the cast. And each one of them brings something different. Mm-hmm. To, I, I literally do not have a favorite. I don't have a favorite actor. I don't have a favorite character. Uh-huh. But amongst our three leading women, mm-hmm. our two leading men, and then our two supporting or two or three supporting guys, mm-hmm. like our top, I'd say one, two, three, four, five. We, we've got like a top eight lineup mm-hmm. that's just amazing. Uh-huh. I, and I just I just love those guys. <laughs> well, I have to confess, I do have a favorite. Okay. And mine is um, the Marcus character. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, the funny thing is that that was one of the more difficult characters mm-hmm. because, you know, there is an infidelity that the show mm-hmm. starts with. Mm-hmm. And you don't. And the challenge was to get some empathy with him. Yeah. You know, where he's not hated. Right. Or even if you're frustrated with him. Right. Um, he's understood Mm -hmm. and Sharonis knew that coming into the role and we Mm -hmm. had a couple of conversations where Mm -hmm. he was like you know I really don't want to just be the bad guy and so we promised him he he would have an opportunity to you know show Mm -hmm. you know where he was coming from why he made the decisions he made why he you know was flawed like everybody's Mm -hmm. flawed so it's nice that people respond to him as well as everybody else yeah and that that came through um, because you're like he's this dog but then you're like mm, he's still cool yeah, I still he's like trying. Him. <laughs> he's trying <laughs> so tell tell me about the show overall for those who haven't seen it yet how would you describe the world of games people play Ah, oh, we're so far in what can I say now <laughs> um because it, it's multi-layered and I know people were like where are they going and they just see everybody has so much going on but it really you know it's it's a uh, You know, it's kind of a little bit of like a a black desperate housewives, you Mm -hmm. could say. It's got a little murder mystery uh, twist in there. But, you know, it really is about an an ensemble set in Los Angeles Mm -hmm. about, you know, the price of fame and and just what happens when everybody's trying to, you know, live their dreams and the flaws and the bumps Mm -hmm. along the way. 
And so the show is really it's really popular now. And like like I mentioned earlier, it's a uh, big craze on Twitter. You know, it's trend, trended a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about uh, the black Twitter audience and how they respond to the show? You know, it's great. This is kind of, I've been doing this a long time. This is my first Twitter show mm-hmm. and I absolutely love it. I love <laughs> the immediate response. I love, sometimes I wonder, like, how do you find time? I'm still trying to get my Twitter <laughs> on and the way they're like tweeting and keeping up and it's like, are y'all watching? Um, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really love that immediate response response. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it serves you, it feeds you, it gives you stuff to think about. And, you know, sometimes it's validating and you just, it's, it's, it's great. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, you're responding along with them and you mm-hmm. see, you know, what they're into and, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll fuel me a little bit in, in coming up with arcs for future mm-hmm. seasons. But, um, I think it's great. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, they are. That's one of my favorite parts of Twitter is <laughs> following you on a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are serious on there, and they will tell you what they think. Yeah, they're, 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 but they're dialed in, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, Marcus ain't shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, let's jump into your writing process. Mm-hmm. When you have... Um, an idea that you're working on or whether it be like solo or you're in a room Mm -hmm. what is your process how do you get started and and what are your steps uh what are my steps let's see I'm on vacation right now what are my steps (laughs) um I I think you've gotta you've gotta kind of do everything at the same time and you Mm got to keep kind of bouncing back and forth you want to have your bigger arcs where you know where you're going you kind of want to know and your ending may change you want to know where you're ending Mm -hmm. before you start even if you change it you want to know where you're going um you want to know the events Mm -hmm. and themes that drive you Mm -hmm. to that place Mm -hmm. And then you've got to go back and then you start dealing with your characters. Okay. You want to know who your characters are, how they respond to these events, what they do, how they affect the outcome. Mm-hmm. And then you want to deal with how they interact with each other, okay. how they change each other. Mm-hmm. And then as you do that, you go back to your overarch and then you go back to your individual characters and then you go back to how they relate to each other. So you, you're writing and you're developing a storyline on mm-hmm. like three different levels and you keep going back and forth and, mm-hmm. and, and everything will kind of inform each other okay. until you get there. And, and you know, sometimes you're, you're, you're chipping away at it as you shoot. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're, you're constantly... And you want to be open. You want to be flexible. You, you don't want to lock into... You always want to have a plan, mm-hmm. but then always be open to changing it. Okay. Hmm. Now, do you ever face writer's block? Is that an issue for you? And if you do, like, how do you get past it? Um, I, I never face it when I'm on assignment. Okay. If I'm trying to just come up with something, sometimes I will. And sometimes you're either burnt out and you need to take a break or mm-hmm. you're not working on the right idea. Mm-hmm. Um. And usually when, if I'm ever just stuck, it's just, it's, it's just wait till tomorrow. <laughs> wait till the next day. It just honestly means you're done for the day. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And you'll unblock yourself. Okay. Now, do you, do you have like a, um, a goal in mind when you start writing? Do you have like a page count in mind or do you have a word count or anything like that? Uh, sometimes, you know, if I'm, you kind of have to sometimes mm-hmm. just to set deadlines for yourself. Mm-hmm. I sometimes I do like a, I like to do a, a scene count. Okay. I like to write by scene that page. Mm-hmm. So I like to write by theme or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what, I'm going to rewrite this act today mm-hmm. or I'm going to write a scene today. I want to write mm-hmm. two scenes today mm-hmm. or this story thing bumped me today. So I'm going to figure out this thing today. I'm going to mm-hmm. conquer this. So, so yeah, I, some, I, I, you always set goals, but I never set them by page or time. I always set them kind of like by like event or thing. Oh, okay. that I have to accomplish. I'm kind of the same way. Um, when I first started, I would do a page count. Mm-hmm. But I found over time, I would, I would do scenes. What if you hit your page and you're not done with the scenes? <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, you know? that's that's what it's naturally mm-hmm. progressed into for me. So, yep. yeah, so I get and that. sometimes you might give yourself two days to do the scene. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but I always like to do it in terms of creative chunks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you had a green light, to write any kind of show you wanted to write, mm-hmm. what would it be? Like, what genre would it be in? Like, 
or would you have a favorite actor you would put in it or a director? Like, if you had your dream show to write, what would it be like? I've still always wanted to do a sketch show. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why I started out in sketch. Mm -hmm. I still feel like at some point I'm going to do a sketch show. Um, But lots of times you can put a little of yourself into anything that you are given. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that was gratifying about... um, adapting the book games Steve is playing to games people play. Mm -hmm. There's some things that I like and I was able to kind of put a little of me in this. So now I feel invested in this Mm -hmm. as well as everything else, but, uh, and everyone else. Um, but I, I want to do, I know I want to do a sketch show. Okay. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, uh, what are you watching on TV now? I watch, um, billions. I love billions. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a show called The Good Fight on CBS All Access. I love dramas. Uh, I just watched Killing Eve. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Ray Donovan. Um, I just love intricate stuff. Handmaid's Tale, Manhunter. Mm-hmm. I love Thoughtful. I just watched uh, Dead to Me on Netflix. I enjoyed mm-hmm. that. Oh, the Bodyguard right. on Netflix I enjoyed. So I like the, the mystery Thoughtful Hours. Yeah, so that's why it's, it's, it's been fun to... to to get into this me too handmaid's uh tale is like one and of my the second favorites. season was was deep it was yeah rough, I, I stuck I, with it i actually stopped watching it because i, I was me so too. angry it was it, it took me a minute <laughs> i needed a moment but i got through it <laughs> so um what advice would you give new writers um to number one just never you got to keep writing and um, you always have to have a sample. Um, if, if you're a writer, even if it's bad, you got to have something. Um, and you, and you, you better not want to do it for the money. And you better not want to do it for the attention. Because it takes a long time. And sometimes the most gratifying things you do creatively are not going to get that for you. Mm-hmm. But if you keep writing, someone will pay you for it. Yeah. You know, but, the, but that can't now. be the, the <laughs> yeah, but that can't be the, 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 your reason for being. Right. Right. I'm like, I got to stay focused yeah. and write every day. Mm-hmm. So, um, good advice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what's next for Vanessa Middleton? Um, I have two features that I, I mean, I want, you always have different things. I'm, I'm really, we're getting good response on games people play. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping that there'll be more. Yes. So <laughs> I'm kind of looking at my feature scripts to work on that on the side because I always like to be writing. It's always nice to be writing more than one thing. Mm-hmm. But I, I'd like to, to, on the television side at least, mm-hmm. scripted television, give that my undivided. Right. So then it's probably just some feature scripts. Okay. Now, In the short you, term. Do you, at this stage, do you still um, write specs? Yeah. Oh, both of my feature mm-hmm. scripts are specs. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, and I'll say one more thing. Mm-hmm. You, the one nice thing about spec writing is if you have the time, mm-hmm. you could get your thought, up, your full point across mm-hmm. more so than you can in a pitch. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I always like the collaborative effort that comes from after I've written the whole script. Mm-hmm. And I, I tend to receive notes better after I've gotten it all out because mm-hmm. then I can say, okay, well, they saw what I meant. Mm-hmm. They saw everything that I was trying to do, mm-hmm. as opposed to when it, you pitch and then they say, well, do this, try this, try that. And then all of a sudden you feel like it becomes a compromise and you never got your full thought process out. But if I have an opportunity to execute something, mm-hmm. then if I have to deal with notes from people, I just receive them better. Because I'm like, OK, well, they saw what I meant. And now we'll take it from there. OK. Well, all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank for you, Roz. I'm doing sorry to this so long. interview. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and where can the people find you online if you? I am you at that? Van Mid <laughs> across the board. I'm at Van Mid on Twitter and mm-hmm. on Instagram. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Roz. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to tune in to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. Don't forget to check out my blog at www.wordygirlent.com. That's W-O-R-D-Y-G-I-R-L-E-N-T dot com. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at at WordyGirlENT and on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash WordyGirlENT. And always remember... It all begins with a single word. So what are you waiting for? Go write.